What's up, everybody? Happy August. Mike here, sitting at the desk, classed it up a little bit. A little tie action, just because, uh, well, just because I should. Not really, but the camera keeps moving, so uh, this might be uh, this might be interesting to, to get through this blog. If it falls all, all the way to the desk, it does. Uh, real quick, uh, got some things to just to unload, uh, get off my chest uh, on the old uh, video blog. First off, uh, NASCAR, A.J. Allmendinger, released by Penske Racing on uh, Wednesday. This after he failed the drug test. You know, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I believe that the positive result on AJ is, is while true, because it was verified with a second test, while it's true, uh, I have a hard time accepting or believing that it's a recreational drug. I, I'm more inclined to think this is a, uh, a supplement that caused a, a test to look, uh, to look this way. Um, no one's releasing the exact results. Uh, AJ's saying what he's saying, and NASCAR is saying nothing. So, uh, but if it is a recreational drug, then shame on him. Plain and simple. If it's a recreational drug for a guy that uh, got one of the prime rides, uh, you know, a prime ride within the Cup Series, and for him to be doing recreational drugs and get caught, uh, shame on him. He knows the rules. If it was a test because of a supplement, a, test, a positive test because of a supplement, um, you know, then that's a tough break. But Penske stuck by their own policies. It doesn't matter if it's a driver, a mechanic, uh, a guy who drives a truck. It doesn't matter. Uh, anybody in that company that you know breaks that rule and, and would fail a drug test would be relieved of duty. And so the same thing happens to AJ. It's a tough way. It's a tough lesson to learn. But uh, AJ, I think, will be fine. Whether uh, whether or not he comes back to NASCAR after he completes his uh, recovery program, uh, whether he goes open wheel or or, or somewhere, I mean, AJ is going to be fine. Uh, I'm rooting for him. I hope he does well. I hope that uh, eventually he'll come forth and say uh, and tell everybody what's going on. But uh, until that time, we're, we're all just kind of left to, uh, to second guess and, and you know, kind of wonder what's going on. Uh, Carolina Panther 24-hour period is over. Their 24-hour rest period mandated by the uh, collective bargaining agreement. Players got some nice concessions in this, uh, in this CBA. The two-a-days being eliminated, no full padded two-a-day practices. Uh, you know, I mean, they, a mandatory 24-hour break, uh, where they're not even, you know, in camp or, you know, no football, no practices, meetings, nothing. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, is this changing the game? Perhaps. You know, is, I'm not saying NFL players aren't tough, because they are. There's no question about it. NFL players are tough. But it brings in the discussion, well, would these players today have held up in yesterday's game, you know, years past? That's not an argument I'm about to make. I know that football players, past, present, future, are all tough guys. Uh, but camp is, is not uh, as nearly as grueling as it has been in years past, having been at Panthers camps when, uh, whether it was uh, Dom Capers or George Seifert or John Fox running two-a-day practices uh, before the rules kind of got, uh, not relaxed, but uh, changed. Uh, and, and, look, it's all for player safety and, and extending careers. I get that. I'm not knocking it at all. It's just uh, you. Just it makes you wonder how would these players that today had fared had or have fared uh, years ago. Just a thought. Uh, Panthers also being a little bit cautious uh, and checking out the Twitterverse uh, tonight. Thomas Davis not practicing. Uh, they're watching his. They're watching him uh, closely uh, because he had that little knee tweak on Sunday or leg tweak, I should say. They haven't said it's a knee, but he's uh, uh, or at least I haven't heard them say it's a knee. So uh, it's a leg. But it's the same surgically repaired leg, the one that's had the three, the three knee surgeries. Uh, they're being cautious with him. Can't fault them for that. Uh, Brandon Hogan and uh, Josh Norman not, not practicing. I mean, uh, let me just double check that and make sure I'm, I'm getting that right. Because uh, I, wanna, I don't want to give you guys any you know, bad information here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see here. Ron Edwards, uh, according to Joseph Person, Ron Edwards is back. Uh, Lewis Murphy has looked uh, has looked good uh, in the practice this evening from uh, from all accounts. Um, you know, there's there's certainly plenty of reason for optimism with this Panther team. We talked about that. We've talked about that here in the blog. Uh, Brandon Hogan, Josh Norman not practicing. Uh, so take it for what you w you know what it's worth. It's still the first week. It's not panic time yet. Get concerned if these injuries drag into. 
uh, week three of the preseason, that sort of thing. If they're not back working out, then it's time to be concerned because Carolina's going to have decisions to make. Do they put guys on IR? Do they bring in outside veterans? You know, all, all the inner workings. Uh, speaking of which, Jeff Ota, no show. He's not, uh, he has not been spotted, at least uh, at, to this point, uh, at the uh, Wednesday night practice in Spartanburg. What does that mean? Who knows? Panthers have a lot of options with him. They can keep him. They can cut him. They can keep him on the pup list. Um, you know, they, they, they try to trade him again. There are a lot of options. Uh, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. I don't necessarily think that Ota is going to play for the Panthers ever again. Uh, it would be kind of hard to. You know, that awkward, he's back, uh, you know, we tried to trade you, didn't work, that sort of thing. So um, I would not expect to see Jeff Ota at practice anytime soon, but uh, that, uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, the Olympic race. I wrote that down. Where did I write that down? I feel like Bob Euchre in Major League here. Where did I put that? Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, the list. The uh, the medals table with uh, play winding down because it is, uh, what, after midnight uh, in uh, in London. China's up uh, total, total medals at 30, United States at 29, uh, Japan 17, France 13, Germany 13, South Korea 12. Overall, and China's got the most golds at 17. And we also had uh, women's basketball, the uh, Americans beating Turkey 89-58. A little sluggish start for Team USA, again. uh, This one for the ladies, and men were a little bit slow the other night. But it didn't matter, they were playing Tunisia. Come on, it was Tunisia. It's like playing, it's like an NBA team playing a, I don't know, a high school team. That's what it amounts to. You know, no offense to the Tunisian players, but you're not as talented as the NBA guys that are over there. So, I mean, it is what it is. And if it, if they were as talented, it would have been a closer game, and the Tunisian guy wouldn't have had Kobe Bryant sign his shoe. Period. Um, what else we got? We got, uh, I got so many things going on in my head right now, I can't get them straight. Hey, got to get your point and shoots going. Uh, you, that's right, you, watching this video right now. Take your phone. Just like I'm doing right now, I'm recording the blog on the phone. You can record your point-and-shoot questions. You can email them to us, sports at news14.com. In fact, I think I should. Oh, see, maybe that's one of them right there. Let's try this. This is called on-the-fly blogging. Do that. So there you go. It looks backwards to me, but it should look right to you. <laughs> you guys have a great night. I'll see you tonight on the Ford Sports Night at 10.